It could well be one of the biggest security breaches in the Indian banking industry. Data from more than 32 lakh debit cards has been compromised. The National Payments Corporation of India says 90 ATMs of one private sector bank have been compromised. Good evening and welcome to this special show. I'm Surabhi Upadhyay. So what should you, the consumer, do? Well, we've been flooded with calls and WhatsApp queries and we hope to address most of them over the course of the next 30 minutes. First things first, do not panic. Banks have issued statements saying that their servers are secure and have appealed for calm. In this show, we'll answer your questions with top executives at some of India's largest banks as well as security experts. Well, joining us uh, would be Rajneesh Kumar of the State Bank of India, Rajiv Anand of Axis Bank. Also joining me on the show is Sivarama Krishnan, cybersecurity leader at Pricewaterhouse India. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. And before I kickstart the conversation and get some of those questions in, let me also get in my colleague Ritu Singh. She's been on top of this story right from last night. Ritu, take us to what has really gone wrong, 32 cards at stake, and what's the banking system's response? Well, absolutely. 32 lakh, lakh not debit, thousand. Yes, 32 lakh, lakh. Debit card yeah. pins have yeah. been compromised. What has really happened is one of the private bank's server uh, and their outsourced processor is where the breach really happened. As a result, 90 uh, ATMs of this uh, particular private bank have been impacted because of which customers from other banks also swiping their cards at any of these 90 ATMs have been impacted, bringing the total number to 32, uh, 32 lakh customers. Six lakh of these, we understand, are rupee based customers customers and 26 and a half lakh of these are Visa and MasterCard customers as well. Uh, the banks that have been impacted include State Bank of India, ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, Yes Bank. Uh, you know, most of these large banks have been impacted. What uh, really has happened is uh, about 150 customer complaints have gone out so far mm -hmm. saying that there were unauthorized transactions in uh, China and the US. They've not been anywhere domestically in India, which is why uh, now the Payments Corporation of India has involved all the uh, authorities including Visa, MasterCard, Rupee, all the cloud providers. They're working with various investigative agencies as well to get to the bottom of this. Uh, they've ordered a forensic report, in fact, which has been commissioned by the Payments Co Corporation of India. Uh, and that report is expected by the end of the month. In the meantime, as you were saying, uh, you know, the bank banks have really made it very clear that there's been no breach of security at their end. Their customers are absolutely safe and secure as preemptive measures. Uh, for instance, State Bank of India has blocked debit cards of six lakh customers. Uh, uh, it will reissue those uh, cards to all of these customers in the meantime. ICICI Bank has acknowledged that there was a security breach and for the affected customers it has blocked the ATM pins mm -hmm. which again will be reissued to these customers. Access Bank has also identified the same threat and it is working on this. Uh, uh, there's also HDFC Bank very importantly says uh, it is requesting its customers to only use HDFC Bank ATMs uh, because it cannot uh, you know really uh, say if uh, the other bank ATMs security is at par with HDFC Banks. Mm -hmm. it is also a uh requested its uh, you know customers to change their ATM pins and lastly yes bank uh, where some of the reports were pointing to breaches at this a particular bank has said there's been no uh, data security breach whatsoever at their network it is absolutely safe and secure but interestingly at this point uh, the, uh, what really comes out is the fact that interoperability of ATMs is something uh, that the banks have been uh, you know uh, harping about and now you have one bank saying do not use another bank's ATM it may not be safe and secure yep. and that is where now the banks are pinning uh, you know, pointing fingers uh, at the outsourced processors. For instance, uh, here out Rana Kapoor of Yes Bank, uh, who's saying there needs to be more policing of these outsourcers. Uh, otherwise, we may be at a grave, uh, you know, security risk. There is a model that is also somewhat outsourced, but outsourcing models also require a lot of vigilance, a lot of quality control, a lot of security control, because n not everybody does all of this, you know, in house. So there needs to be a lot more vigilance where there are outsourcing partners to make sure that they don't endanger uh, delivery uh, and system risk. And there is a fair amount of policing as far as you know, outsourcing uh, you know, risks are concerned. And these sometimes intensify into fairly high operational risks as well. Okay, all right. So at the outset, we have to say that there is no cause of panic. We have experts and, of course, the banking sector stalwarts joining us on the show to answer some of your questions. In fact, let's start this discussion by taking a couple of your queries that have been coming in. Abdullah Hakim is on the line. Yes, Mr. Hakim, how can we help you? Okay, uh, there's been a lot of chaos uh, around. Well, my friends from SBI have got this. 
think that their ATMs have been blocked. Luckily for me, my ATM has not been blocked. Uh, my account is like I'd, I've not had any qu queries on uh, changing the password or such. My question is, is online transactions safe? Like apart from ATM, I'm not u using my ATM right now. But does, because I'm a guy who shops a lot online. So okay. is it safe right now to shop online? <laughs> One understands the concern and the question, uh, Abdullah. Thanks for joining in. In fact, I'd like to highlight another WhatsApp query that we've got. It's very similar in nature. This one was from Dr. Uh, Sashya Lata. And she said that I got very worried listening to this uh, story about 30 lakh cards getting impacted. And she's already moved some funds and she's an SBI customer. She's moved some funds not knowing what to do. We've got the bankers with us as well, both Mr. Rajiv Anand of Axis Bank and uh, Mr. Kumar of State Bank of India. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining in because it's important to send out the right message right now that this is not a system-wide, you know, pandemic issue. Uh, Mr. Kumar, if I could come to you first, what is it that you'd like to convey to customers in terms of just not doing anything hasty? People are worried, as you just heard, about the, the bank account safety itself and those whose cards have not been blocked, even they seem to be a little concerned. No, uh, definitely there would be uh, concerns and uh, it is a natural reaction. But uh, you see, uh, uh, if I were to draw an analogy, mm -hmm. if a accident happens, we don't stop going on the road. But what we make an effort that we increase the road safety measures. And this is a similar situation. We are living in an interconnected world. We are very, very accustomed to now using debit cards and credit cards for the transactions. But there are a couple of things which as a customer or a debit card holder one can do. And my advice would be, suppose you are not traveling abroad, you are not using card abroad. So there is no need for you to have a feature which allows transactions from abroad. And there is a facility through simple SMS, you can block that. As far as the state bank is concerned, now we have 55,000 uh, ATMs in the network and there are 200 million debit card users. And it is a way of life now that uh, we go to ATM, draw cash, or we, uh, when we do any transaction, either we pay by a debit card or credit card or e-commerce. Mm. So system are safe and anyone who is part of the system it is their responsibility to make the system safe and foolproof as much as possible. And that is what we keep on always doing. Always there are vulnerability tests which keep on going. What are the new security measures which can be introduced? There we have in the State Bank a state-of-the-art security operations center which functions 24 by 7. Then uh, we sure. have card prevention fraud monitoring system. So sure. it is not that, sure. uh, and it is uh, like I would like to give a comfort uh, to our customers that this is not where uh, there should be any need for panic. But yes, if there are certain vulnerabilities at whatever point or wherever they have been found, they need to be plugged in. And sure. uh, whoever is part of this payment ecosystem, uh, sure. It is not one bank which runs the system, it is a larger ecosystem. That, that's and the that point, ecosystem sir. needs to be strengthened. That's exactly the point that I want to come to with the, the other guests as well. Uh, uh, Shivarama Krishnan, if I can bring you in on the conversation, we're talking about digital being the next real wave in terms of transactions. We're talking about the UPI interface coming in. So while we completely take the point that there is no reason to panic, and yes, there are 32 lakh cards impacted, but only 150 actually actual fraudulent transactions that have been reported. So we must keep the numbers in mind. We take that on board. However, is it not a concern that 90 ATMs were somewhere compromised? <clears throat> I, I think we need to put this in a true perspective. When it comes to cybersecurity, there are events that have affected, there are presumptive action organizations can take. What uh, the banks have done or the Payment Corporation of India have suggested is more of a pre preemptive action based on certain incidences that have happened. So from that perspective, it is a proactiveness of the Indian financial institution system that is in work at, this, at, the, at the moment. Having said that, it could be a, you know, alarm, it's a, just a, like an alarm today that for the future, it could be a kind of wake up call for, for the whole ecosystem to be collaborative, cohesive and start working together to improve overall security. So 
it's it's a learning for us and from here how we go forward is more important than looking at what has happened because what has happened is not 32 lakh customers got impacted there is a preemptive action due to which they've asked either advice to change the pins or the banks have went ahead and you know request for a change of card that's a good step sure. that's the first step but way forward is going to be to look at the overall indian eco ecosystem financial banking ecosystem and what improvements that requires to be made whether it's third party whether it is own banks or whether it's collateral damage that could happen because of one partner's failure affecting the entire value chain you know, talking about bringing about that improvement, and especially in the third-party vendors, uh, Mr. Rajiv Anand, if we may ask you this, uh, while you can guarantee your own servers and uh, systems are safe and secure uh, for all of your customers at Access Bank, what about the third-party vendors? Is there not enough policing there? Uh, is that a gray area where perhaps, you know, we are at a grave risk because uh, you can only guarantee what your uh, systems and safety, your servers, as far as those are concerned, but not what a third-party vendor is really doing? Um, you know, firstly, uh, Access does not outsource um, uh, its servers as far as the ATMs are concerned. But having said okay. that, um, I think we are in an interconnected world. Customers, our customers use other bank ATMs and vice versa. Mm. Uh, and so therefore, having a safe and secure, um, you know, sort of ecosystem, uh, I think is uh, is critical. But at the same time, you know, I don't want to generalize, um, you know, uh, uh, based on this particular you know, sort of incident. I think um, the banks in general and uh, including Access have, have taken uh, significant measures to be able to, you know, sort of control the damage and be able to provide a safe and secure uh, environment uh, for customers to transact, uh, whether it is uh, on the ATMs, internet, mobile, or even our branches. Okay, gentlemen, we have some more callers on the line. In fact, we've been getting lots of queries throughout the afternoon. Uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, Prajanya Shetty. She is uh, 26 years old, and she has a query for our panel. Prajanya, go ahead. Uh, hey, hi. I wanted to know why, why, how can a bank like SBI have this kind of uh, this kind of problems happening? I mean, it's so inconvenient, yeah, all the time. It's not, when... Prajanya. I have to cut you out there because it's not State Bank of India. We're putting that on record. This is a, a compromise of 90 ATMs of a different bank, but banks like SBI and Axis and others, as a preemptive measure to ensure that there is no fraud, they have gone ahead and blocked cards or asked their users to change their PIN. So I'm, I'm setting the record straight there. But yes, was your card blocked? Is there some inconvenience that you're facing? Yeah, my card was blocked. My card was blocked a week ago. And the only part that is very inconvenient is that every time you want money, you have to go to the bank, withdraw it all the time. You know, it's back and forth because you have such a busy life all the time. You do not really have that kind of to go to the bank all the time. Point, point taken, point taken, Prajanya. We'll try and get actually some more uh, callers in as well on this uh, front because a couple of them have actually faced issues in getting new cards uh, reissued. Uh, Mr. Rajneesh Kumar, if I could come to you. I mean, as the bank is looking at, obviously, the process of re reissuing those six lakh cards, uh, how quick a redressal or a resolution can we expect in the coming days? No, no, uh, uh, we, we will be able to dispatch these cards uh, within the next two to three days for sure. And uh, they will be couriered and uh, all the card holders, wherever the cards have been blocked, they will get their cards and they can start uh, transacting using their card. And nowadays, you once you receive your card, you don't have to go to the bank branch for uh, activation. There is a facility of what we call green pin generation. And you can activate your card uh, by either going to the ATM or through internet banking, you can get your ATM pin. So as soon as you get the cards, and they will all will be sent by courier. So uh, we are uh, ensuring that uh, customers are... Uh, uh, the customer inconvenience is minimum, but given the circumstances, I think it was a step where the bank is bearing the entire cost, but it is in the interest of the customers that this step has been taken and not with the intent to inconvenience them. Um, well, uh, just to set the record straight, six lakh uh, debit cards is what you have blocked as of now. Uh, are you still in the process of identifying this threat? Can we expect more action from the bank in the sense of could there be more cards that could be blocked? Is there a threat of a wider uh, spread of this uh, you know, data breach? No, if any such situation further comes to our notice or wherever there is any alert, 
Yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, we will take uh, the similar precautionary measures. But as of now, the information is about uh, these 600,000 cards which have been used outside the state bank groups, uh, ATMs, and I am happy that you have clarified that it is not the ATMs of SBI which have been compromised. But uh, again and again, the point which comes is that in an interconnected world, every partner in that ecosystem has to be secure. Okay, let's now connect with Y Ramakrishna. Um, I believe uh, he his card was also impacted. I'm not sure if it was a credit or a debit card. Mr. Ramakrishna, hi, can you hear me? Oh, yes, madam. Thank you very much. Yes, tell us. So, uh, what happened with your card? What sort of a card was it? And what's the response yeah, actually, so far? Yeah, actually, madam, not card. Just I will tell you. Hmm. I got an account with the State Bank of India, Manali, Chennai, madam. Hmm. Not card, actually, madam. I actually went to into US in June. In July, uh, in July, okay. Madam, on 24th July and 25th July, 1100 each two days, that is four times. Somebody transferred from my account, madam, through IMPS. Okay, sir, uh, I think what you are talking about is a, is a different matter. That would be a different sort of an unauthorized transaction or a fraudulent transaction that happened, not linked to this data breach. So let's not mix up everything over here. But uh, that brings me to the wider point, Rajiv, on uh, what the RBI's thought process is on limiting customer liability. Now, whether it's this data breach or we're talking about any other sort of fraudulent transaction, what the RBI has proposed in August this year is that as long as customers report, you know, as quickly as possible, within three working days, there will be zero liability on them. Mm -hmm. Is that something that's going to be palpable for banks? Do you see this draft framework actually evolving into hard law? I think, um, you, you, you know, let's, um, let's look at what there are ATM transactions that happen on a regular basis. Um, you know, some of those transactions don't go through. So there is a, a straightforward chargeback mechanism that happens between banks uh, and, uh, you know, the customers are typically paid uh, anything between, you know, four to seven days. Uh, if, if transactions happen, uh, if, uh, you know, sort of transactions of the nature that we are talking about happen, uh, we've had some instances of customers coming to us saying that you know we've seen transactions happening which are which have been of a suspicious nature we have uh, we have investigated the transactions we have found them to be of a suspicious nature and we have credited the money back to the customer so i think uh, as long as the customer is able to demonstrate that he has he has he has done the requisite due diligence that he has not shared his password with anybody uh, he has been he has been changing his password or pin number on a regular basis uh, the fact that he has been able to, he he does check um, you know the uh, the sms transaction sms on a regular basis uh, and uh, most important that the his the mobile number that he has registered with uh, with the bank is indeed uh, indeed current uh, i think if if you are able to you know sort of demonstrate that uh, you know you you've been able to do this and you've been careful with uh, you know while you're transacting either on the atm or the internet or mobile um, i think the banks will treat such such transactions will work closely with the customer and ensure that uh, the customers don't lose their money. Okay, uh, Mr. Krishna, let me come back to you. Very quickly encapsulate for us what needs to be done to strengthen security systems so that these kind of data breaches do not occur, whether it's an ATM, whether we're talking about a net banking transaction, because this was neither the customer's fault not, nor the bank's fault, not necessarily at least. It was a third-party issue. So what more needs to be done to strengthen the overall system? Uh, just I want a, no reply at all from their bank people. You to... uh, no, that question was for uh, Siva Ramakrishnan. Mr. Krishnan, if I could come to you. Let's get a view from PwC. Yeah. Uh, I think there are fundamentally three blocks of activities uh, the whole ecosystem partners have to undertake. I would not limit ourselves only to the banks alone. Every uh, ecosystem partner equally take, need to take responsibility to ensure that they do right things. First fundamental thing is that... Uh, you know, while certain banks may not outsource anything, certain banks may outsource, but there are services that are being provided, etc. How will the every part of ecosystem partners have adequate controls and responsible measures are taken? And what kind of a supervisory measures the banks have on top of them so that right things happen is first thing that they need to do. Second is that expecting that everything needs to have only preventive measures may not necessarily, uh, you know, adaptable in the in the cyber world because you can only prevent what you know 
in cyber world you will end up in having number of incidents what you do not do not know or you get to know later in that in those circumstances a uh, banks and every ecosystem partners need to have an ability to detect and respond faster and quicker for instance in this case I mean I as a expert believe that it is the right level of response that has been given to prevent it this incident doesn't lead to financial losses to the customers sure. and consumers sure while that's the second thing which are needed from both banks as well as the uh, the ecosystem partners sure but sure. i do believe that the customers the consumers also need to play their role right uh, to be honest rbi is the first bank who has mandated for a transactions to be notified immediately to the customers through sms that's, and email that's right the rbi the has been very pro consumer mandatory Uh, totally uh, mr krishna i'm so sorry to come in over there because we're trying to uh, squeeze in some more comments from our viewers before we wrap up swapnil sharma is joining in he's a student and i think he's got an issue with the credit card swapnil very quickly 30 seconds what exactly happened with your card yeah so yesterday i'm speaking on behalf of my father's card so okay. yesterday at uh, 2130 uh, what happened was that there was a transaction in the us uh, in the merchant name of uh, brooks brothers Okay. So that was a transaction valuing of about forty-five thousand rupees, hmm. but uh, there was an alert uh, via an SMS, but that went unnoticed. Uh, so what happened was that in the morning, because my parents have been traveling, so in the morning what happened was they they had noticed that there had been a transaction made, and then okay. uh, we had gotten in touch with the bank. So the bank has said that uh, we are looking into it. and also there was an incident i just want to 11... ask you i just want to ask you very quickly so there was an unauthorized transaction that took place yes, with your card yes. worth 45000 rupees was this card used to withdraw cash or was this used at any any indian bank atm network in the last 4 to 5 no. weeks i would like to inform to you that this is a credit card which has mm. been used for international transactions okay. but as mr anand that earlier mentioned we have always been uh, you know taking care of the passwords taking care of Uh, changing the pin sure. uh, so that is not a major problem but then sure. this is a transaction which is not authorized okay. by us oh okay thank you for calling in swapnil i'll put that to the bankers in just a bit we also have a query from mr jj frank i think uh, and he's asking a very pertinent question he's saying that it's getting a little confusing um the banks usually say that you know we'll never ask you about your atm pin but now some of the banks i think are talking about changing your pin so becoming becoming a little confusing for customers mr frank very quickly what's your question Uh, well, on September nineteenth, uh, I received this message, uh, and it stated that uh, I mean I forwarded the message to you guys. So uh, since you want me to quickly make that point, so I called back the uh, the, the bank. The number I did not call. The, the, there was a number provided on the SM, um, in the SMS, but I did not call that number. I called another number. I checked the number that was anywhere listed on the um, ICIC site. So I called another number, and they. and i spoke to the cbe uh, mm. uh, and uh, she said that uh, no we haven't sent the message and the message said that your international limit has been reduced by 7000 uh, and okay. uh, 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 i'm sorry has been reduced to 7000 and uh, please go ahead and change your pin so i asked them they said no the message okay. hasn't been sent by okay. us okay 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 let, let me let, let me quickly come to the bankers to try and understand both of these issues uh, rajiv to you first now then i'll come to mr rajnish kumar as well so we saw two different queries being raised i mean people are also getting confused about their credit card transactions right now could there be any possible link as you just heard in that example and also this confusion about usually banks will never ask you to do anything to your pin but in certain cases now banks are asking customers to go and change their pins how to ensure that this is not a fraudster trying to you know make the best of the situation to his or her advantage so in the first case what's happened is that the credit card has you know sort of uh, has gotten compromised uh, so as a result of that uh, what he should do is uh, contact the card, contact the bank immediately dispute the transaction uh, and also ensure that the card is is blocked uh in the second case uh, you know uh, you will you will typically get a uh, an sms which will which uh, the header of which will say you know it's access bank or 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 your bank uh, and it will say that go and um, you know sort of uh, uh, change the pin number uh, so therefore uh, you can go to any of the atms uh, of access bank and you know sort of go to the set pin option and reset the pin so in this particular case even if you know let's say for example that um, the sms is fraudulent the fact that you have changed your pin number obviously um, uh, is a good thing okay uh, and um, you know you you've just ensured that anyway i have been recommending that uh, that pin number should be 
should be changed on a periodic basis. Sure. Having said all that, I mean, I think um, uh, that gentleman should uh, should have a conversation with uh, uh, with his bank. Uh, on the veracity of um, of the SMS that he has received. Okay, so the message being be very careful, change your pin, but do not share it with anyone. Mr. Rajneesh Kumar, sir, last thoughts with you. Yeah, basically, like uh, we always advise our customers that uh, periodically they should change the pin, but in the instant cases, uh, customers were advised to change the pin, but uh, the percentage of the customers who change their pin was very low, and that's why this action of replacing the card itself. And uh, the customers, uh, I think uh, they should be very, very careful whenever they are doing a transaction. And uh, under no circumstances, they should uh, share their password or PIN with anyone. Okay, all right, Mr. Anand, Mr. Kumar, uh, and also Mr. Krishan, thank you so much for joining in and taking in all the viewer queries and questions. Hopefully, that will uh, calm or ease out some of the concern and panic which has been prevalent out there. Thank you so much. That's it on this special.